What's up audit fans? In this video, we're going to look at the audit risk model and the detection risk matrix. It's a staple in textbooks all over the world. However, there's a possibility that the matrix might sometimes be steering us down the wrong direction. So let's dive in. Hi, for all those people who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Amanda White and I teach auditing to undergrads at a major Australian university. Uh, for everybody who is a loyal subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, this video today comes out of some class discussion I had with my students where we were tossing up where the detection risk and the detection risk matrix always gives us the right strategy for us to recommend to our clients. Um, we tend to follow or students tend to follow the detection risk matrix quite blindly without thinking about the implications of the different components. So we're going to dive in to this video. The detection risk matrix comes from the implementation of the audit risk model. Remember audit risk, which is the risk that we give the wrong audit opinion, is a function of inherent risk, control risk, and detection risk. And we know that the way that we use that model is by actually putting detection risk on the left-hand side and audit risk is a function of inherent and control risk. We also know that detection risk and inherent risk, these two things move in opposite directions. So as risk increases, so then does the risk uh, that we want to give the wrong opinion. Um, the detection risk, the risk of not finding an error, uh, needs to decrease because there's more potential misstatements within the financials. Now, when we're looking at the audit risk model, um, the basic high and low of the audit risk model works really well, okay? If you have high inherent risk and high control risk, there's a very high risk of material misstatements within the financials. And so therefore, we need to make sure that our detection risk is low. We do all that we can to find many, many errors. All right, so low detection risk works absolutely uh, fine in that situation. So high, high, and then you end up down here at low, and low gives you that substantive audit strategy. Now, if we look at the opposite end of the scale, low inherent risk, really um, low uh, risk of that industry and of that business and low control risk, which means that we have very good internal controls, I can take a high detection risk approach, which is a controls-based audit for the strategy. I'm going to focus on testing the internal controls and then do a very limited amount of substantive testing because there's not a lot to find. This is not a risky client. Though it gets more complicated when we get into the medium levels. So I'm going to scrub out everything from the high, high and the low, low situation so that we can dig into medium and to talk about how not all mediums are the same. So let's start with a situation where we have um, low control risk. All right, so good internal controls and we have high inherent risk. So we have a situation where we have medium risk. So good internal controls. Good internal controls means I'm going to test controls so that I can rely on them. I wanna to test to make sure that they're working. And then I'm going to do substantive testing where they, there are high risks of material misstatements. All right, those specific areas that are very high. So this sort of approach that we see right here really is a mixed approach to the audit. And typically the idea is that if you're in this medium category, medium, 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 that you would go for this mixed approach. So this makes total sense. However, let's look at medium on the other end of the spectrum. What do we get when we have medium down here in this bottom corner. We have low inherent risk, low risk industry, low risk client um, in terms of things going on. But 
The medium comes about because we have high control risk. We have poor controls. All right, this is the, the system that's the cheese full of holes. It's not going to, you know, this is the bucket with the holes in it. Um, it's not going to prevent or detect any material misstatements. So in this instance, is mixed the way to go? Probably not, because you have high internal control risk, which means that there aren't really going to be a lot of good controls to test. And every control weakness also results in a place where there could be more errors that you're going to have to search for substantively. We're not going to do the mixed approach here. We're more likely to do an approach that is heavier on substantive testing, all right, because of the high level of control risk. So this demonstrates that medium and medium are not actually the same thing. So when we say medium, um, in this instance, medium there and also probably uh, medium down here in this box where I have medium controls and medium inherent risk, those two are probably a pretty good instance in which you do mixed audits. However, medium down here, mixed just doesn't make sense and you're gonna to want to focus on more substantive testing. So this is why it's really important to not just know the audit risk model and know the detection risk matrix, but it's important to understand the components and how the model works so that in instances like this one over here uh, in the pink, it's really important to know when you might need to override the model, when the generic rule of thumb doesn't actually apply. And this can apply to everything in audit. You might have a tool at your audit firm that you use, some sort of analytic tool that might say, look, this is not a problem, but your analysis of the situation, your industry knowledge, uh, your understanding of the client might need you to override that. So don't just rely on automated tools, matrix, matrices, rules of thumb, checklists. Always make sure that you're thinking about the judgments you're making to see if they make sense with the auditing standards because sometimes the situation may not just uh, fit the rules that the situations sort of are designed for. You might have something unusual. So it's important to think independently and think critically as an auditor. I hope you found the video useful. Do you agree or disagree with uh, my thoughts on the audit risk model and detection risk? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Of course, if you thought the video was useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and I hope that you're staying safe, staying well, and I'll see you next time.